This is the Star News Brief. I'm Jolie Regi. A bill to amend the constitution arising from BBI could be published by Monday in what could dash hopes for groups pushing for sweeping amendments to the report. This surfaces as it emerged that political hardliners in the BBI camp could have prevailed upon President Uhuru Kenyatta and his handshake partner Raila Odinga to completely slam the door for any new proposals. The publication of the Constitution of Kenya Amendment Bill 2020 would be a remarkable step by the proponents of the Building Bridges Initiative in their push to amend the Supreme Law. The move to publish the crucial bill would guarantee strict adherence to the June 2021 referendum timelines that were unveiled by the two BBI principals in Naivasha last week. The star has established that Uhuru and Raila have yielded to pressure from their lieutenants and given the green light for the publication of the bill in a few days. Get a copy of The Star by subscribing to our e-paper for only 10 shillings by dialing star 550 star 3 hash. A survivor of the Kiamba Church fire tragedy following the post-election violence on January 1, 2008 is among six witnesses that lawyer Paul Gisheru is accused of interfering with. At least 30 people were burnt alive in the Eldoret-based church at the height of the mayhem that followed the disputed 2007 election. The survivor, a woman identified as witness P536, told the International Criminal Court how she saved her brother by stripping naked during the heinous act. According to chronicles of the International Justice Monitor, the witness sought refuge in the church as youths had burnt several homes in nearby villages. She recounted how thousands of young men with faces smeared in white clay and their leaders donning bandanas attacked the church. The witness also told the ICC that she watched a woman raped and an elderly man struck on the head with an axe. As the government continues to clear the trees standing along the area marked for the Nairobi Expressway, the iconic fig tree standing along the Waiyaki Way continues to elicit debate. Conservationists and the locals had demonstrated attempts to uproot or relocate the tree. Last month, Kenya National Highways Authority said that it was clearing the structures standing on the sites where the project will pass through. The authority had said that the tree, which has been standing for about a hundred years, would be transported for relocation as part of our environmental conservation efforts. But on Wednesday, Nairobi Metropolitan Service Director General Mohamed Badi said the tree would neither be relocated nor cut. The specific purpose of me coming here is to assure members of public uh, and all those concerned for conservation this tree will be preserved. That whatever development that is going to happen here will not touch this tree. Kenya is among 65 countries in the world whose sovereign credit worthiness will maintain the negative status next year, according to the 2021 Moody's Sovereign Outlook. The credit rating agency attributes this to negative effects of coronavirus, which has weighed down economic activities, government finances, and complicated policy choices. According to the outlook released on Wednesday, 65, that 60 percent, of Kenya's 108 sovereign rating actions have been negative, a higher proportion than in 2019, 20 percent, and 2018, 30 percent. It adds that almost a third, 33, of all rating actions in 2020 were downgrades, the highest tally since the actions taken in 2016 in response to the previous oil price shock. The report says that COVID-19 associated expenditures and loss of revenue has led to widening fiscal deficits and record high debt levels. A retired teacher, a Nomena seller and a Sunday school teacher are among 150 women who could only dream of owning land and subsequently houses until a plan to save as little as 100 shillings a day brought that fantasy within reach. Dominion Daughters, a group of 150 women, came together to prove to the society that women can also invest and to also raise the voice of economic freedom among women. Founder and CEO Rachel Masiga, a mother of two, said she was inspired to start the group by her mother, who worked as a civil servant in national government offices for years, but died without any property in her name. In 2015, Masiga was given shares of her late mother. 
she used them to start up the group to enable women to own property and have documents that have their name other than the identification card given by the government. HIV prevention in the country could soon change from oral pills to injectable. This is after trials on HIV injectable antiretroviral drug Cabotegravir, CabLA, have shown that the drug is 89% more effective in preventing HIV among women compared to daily tablets of pre-exposure prophylaxis. The drug is administered by injection every two months. The trial, launched in 2017, enrolled 3,223 women aged between 18 and 45 years who were at higher risk of acquiring HIV in 20 sites across seven countries, including Kenya. Other countries that participated in the trial include Uganda, South Africa, Malawi, Botswana, Zimbabwe, and Eswatini. The injectable option is expected to offer a better choice for women at substantial HIV risk who either do not want to take or struggle with taking a daily tablet. Get a copy of The Star by subscribing to our e-paper for only 10 shillings by dialing star 550 star 3 hash. You can also get more on The Star website.